What were the officials playing at? Belgium scraped a 1-0 win over Canada on Wednesday evening. But the occasion was marred by a succession of contentious refereeing decisions. The man in charge of proceedings was none other than Yanni Sikowski, the man who whistled for the end of an AFCON 2020 game in the 85th and 89th minute due to heat stroke. The first incident occurred in the 13th minute. Canada probed and probed, forcing Eden Hazard to play a risky back pass in his own box. Tahun Buchanan intercepted before being thrown off balance by Jan Vertonghen. The referee blew his whistle with many expecting a second penalty to be given, just like he had done five minutes earlier. But no, 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 no. He was in fact signaling an offside, despite Hazard being the one that bit played the ball. <sighs> Understandably, the Canadians were incensed and their misery was compounded by former Premier League Mark Clattenburg. Analyzing the incident in his role as a pundit on Fox Sport, he declared, it's a human error from VAR, and Canada should have been awarded a second penalty. Then, in the 38th minute, Richie Laurier was hauled down by Axel Witzel. Surely, a penalty would be awarded this time, hmm? But no, neither the referee nor VAR believed any infringement had taken place. Controversy then reigned when Thomas Munier escaped a red card in the second half. Having already been shown a yellow for an elbow, he could have copped a second after a rugged challenge, but he went unpunished. Sikazvi wasn't finished there. But it was the Belgians that felt aggrieved on this occasion. In the 82nd minute, Canada's Alistair Johnston produced a cynical tackle on Belgium's Lois Appenda, who was heading towards goal. Having assessed the situation, the referee decided to brandish a yellow instead of a red, a decision that capped a catalog of errors from the Zambian referee. Ultimately, the Belgians remained resolute and hung on to an underwhelming 1-0 win, despite Canada being largely superior throughout. Rather surprisingly, midfield maestro Kevin De Bruyne was awarded the Man of the Match award. His comments proved that they were fortunate to scrape the win. I don't think I played very well. I don't know why I won the Man of the Match award, perhaps because of my name. In any case, full respect to Canada. Earlier on, Spain took on Costa Rica in a game which seemed one-sided on paper. And those early assumptions wrong true. La Roja secured a resounding 7-0 victory with young Finam Gavi starring for his side. The Barcelona midfielder entered the record books. Aged just 18 years and 110 days old, he became the youngest player to score in a World Cup since Pele. The Brazilian was 17 years and 249 days old when he scored against Sweden in the 1958 final. Spain's emphatic win sparked joy among their fan base. Over in Qatar, there were a mixture of emotions. Many were happy that Spain secured such a comprehensive victory, while others sympathized with the Costa Rican side. Pues, el resultado me gusta, mas me siento triste por Costa Rica. Es diferente perder un 3 a 0, un 2 a 0, pero pues no jugaron como ellos saben jugar. Ojalá que para el próximo partido ellos puedan recuperarse y volver otra vez a hacer lo que es Costa Rica. Inevitably, the mood was rather more downbeat in the Costa Rican camp. Some fans felt totally humiliated. Realmente decepcionada. Este, siento que nos humillaron completamente en la cancha. No se le dio actitud de nada a la selección, empezando por el entrenador, demasiado pasivo en el banquillo. Este, no hubieron cambios realmente aceptados y la defensa terrible. Que esperábamos más de la selección, verdad, un 7 a 0 ya y uno no se lo puede imaginar. Esperaba un equipo con más garra, con más intensidad y pues no se vio nada de eso, verdad. Entonces, esperemos que, que mejoren para el próximo partido 
pero sí, la verdad es que ya estamos golpeados porque en realidad esperábamos más del equipo. They'll have to lift their spirits ahead of their encounter with Japan. The same Japan that caused a huge upset by beating European giants Germany. And we'll be touching on that in the second part of our bulletin. <laughs> قرر ينظف الملعب حتى مو مباراتهم ليت مي هيلب يو جايز ولما سالتهم عن السبب اللي يخليهم يضفون شيء هم ما لهم علاقه فيه كان الجواب The Japanese have struck again first it was their supporters who continue to tidy the stands despite their side not playing but now The players have got in on the action too, leaving the dressing room spotless after their victory over Germany. Just, just look at this. It's, it's even cleaner than when they arrived. This is commonplace for the Japanese. Back at the 2018 World Cup in Russia, they tidied their dressing room despite having been eliminated by the Belgians. It's safe to say they've become everyone's Second team. Let's talk a little bit more about their seismic upset. They produced a spirited comeback to topple European giants and perennial challengers Germany, having gone down 1-0 following Ilke Gundogan's penalty. Many, many thought they were down and out. But two quick-fire goals in the 75th an 83rd minute changed the complexion of the game entirely. Germany probed and probed, but Japan remained resolute, securing arguably their greatest World Cup triumph. For Germany, their defeat is a bitter pill to swallow. But there was another major talking point, and that was the German side's protest ahead of kickoff. The players placed their hands over their mouths during their team photo, an admirable reaction to FIFA's decision to ban Manuel Neuer from wearing a One Love armband. Hansi Flick refused to blame his side's defeat on any perceived pre-match disruptions. It's something that's close to our hearts. We wanted to send a message that FIFA had silenced us, but there's no reason to believe that this initiative distracted our players. We're not looking for excuses. That would be too easy. Meanwhile, Kai Havertz discussed the reasoning behind their gesture. We spoke about what we could do and we thought it was the right gesture. FIFA made things difficult for us and we wanted to show how we felt. It was important for us. In addition, Manuel Neuer wore gloves and soles adorned with the colors of the rainbow. Unfortunately for his protests, he could face a large fine and a potential yellow card. But Let's move on to Saudi Arabia now. We're not sure about you, but we still can't get over their momentous victory over Argentina. A victory that set the World Cup alight. It wasn't just their players that were on form. Their fans were too. Our journalist Isaline has been following Saudi supporters in Qatar, and they've been showing off their talents. Their fans have been in jubilant mood and just look at how well they performed during this challenge. 